What is up guys? Today we're riding on the InMotion B10F, which is kind of like the big brother to the InMotion V8. Ah, uh, the traffic, be safe. Yeah, this guy is a beast. Again, big brother, 16 inch wheel still, but a 2000 watt motor. So over, over double what the V8 is. And you go up to 40 kilometers an hour. It's really fast, really fun. And today we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so now that we're all set up, let's actually talk about this thing a little bit. So again, this is the InMotion V10F, and again, it's the big brother to the V8, which is the one I did a while ago and one I'm currently riding and own. This thing's a power horse, it weighs 45 pounds, so it's you know about 50% heavier than the V8. Uh, 2000 watt motor, it can go up to 40 kilometers an hour, and the V10F is rated for, I believe, 90 kilometers distance. So it can go pretty far, at the, like 70 to 90 kilometers is a pretty big range. There's a normal normal light in the front if you hold the button. So get a little flashlight or a headlight if you are riding in nighttime, as well as it has a brake light. So if you're reversing or slowing down, it blinks at you. Yeah, it's really cool. Safety, guys. It also has a Bluetooth speaker. Let's see if we can get this to work. Should it connect through Bluetooth? And it's, it's two separate connections. There's one for the app itself as well as one called Electric Unicycle, I think. Yeah, so it's called Unicycle Audio. I'm not sure if you can see that. But once you connect with the Unicycle Audio, anything you play through your phone will play through your Unicycle too. Ding. Look at that. It's pretty sweet. Let's go from this. So you can keep on playing that uh, normally when you're riding or even like use it as a speaker if you're at work or at home. Just like turn it on. Uh, I think you can put it in. Yeah, you can rest in the in the leaning back position and still play your favorite tunes. It's pretty cool, guys. So again, similar to the V8, it has a little handle here, so you can wheel it around. Although it's a swingy handle instead of a pop-out handle, it does a pretty good job. I mean, it's kind of in the way when you're trying to carry it because it increases your grip here, but it does a pretty good job. Uh, it still has the same button on the bottom, so you can pick it up without the wheel going nuts and has all the patterns on the side, obviously. I'm not gonna show that right now because I have the cover on it and it's pretty bright, so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Last big difference is these foot plates. Let's check this out. So these guys are absolutely huge. I have, you know, a pretty small feet, but these are like way bigger than the V8, which is nice to like, you know, balance on. I don't like the rubber though. I wish these were made out of like grip tape, like a skateboard, but this is a pretty good job for what it is. Okay, so another really cool thing about this thing is the app. So same app as the InMotion V8, but under settings, you have so many more options for how to customize this. So you have two main things. You have the footboard sensitivity, and that basically reacts on how, um, how aggressive the thing lets you lean on the board. At least when you're cruising, it'll try to maintain whatever this pedal horizontal adjustment is. But when you're trying to accelerate or decelerate, the stiffness of this wheel will be controlled by this footboard sensitivity. And this is really cool. The V8, maybe because it has a smaller motor or it's a different software, is pretty springy. You can you know, bounce, you can, it has a lot of give to it. But this guy at first, when this was fully cranked up, it would try to stay as like, stiff as possible, it would not let me move. So having the ability to adjust that so it feels more like the V8 is really cool. I know a lot of people like to have it like a bit lower. I like about 50%. That feels comfortable to me. Uh, the second thing is this comfort mode versus classic mode. And how do I explain this? This is, um, this is kind of uh, simultaneously a way to save energy on the unicycle, as well as how it leans when you're not at 100%. So 
From what I can tell online, it only really affects the wheel when it's below 60% for forward sensitivity. But comfort mode basically makes it a linear acceleration when you, when you rotate. But in classic mode, it's a bit more jerky. In general, I will say that I'm a bigger fan of the comfort mode. I feel it's just a, a more enjoyable riding experience. Um, for what you can see online, classic mode runs a bit cooler. I think it's at 9 degrees cooler when running at peak peak speed. Uh, so comfort mode is going to run a bit hotter, which means it's going to run use a bit more batteries. But I mean, it has a huge range already. I don't mind lowering a bit of my range in, so that the comfort of the ride is, uh, is a lot better. I want to take a second to talk about Smart Wheel, the sponsor of the video today. They let me borrow the InMotion V10F for today's video and they're a great company to work with, uh, especially if you're looking to upgrade like I'm talking about in this video. So I have the V8 uh, right now and Smartwell has a trading program where you can send in your old unicycle or scooter or whatever you have um, and get it towards the, the retail value towards your next purchase, which again is a really great option if you're looking to either upgrade or buy a refurbished and a guaranteed warranted product. So if you're looking to buy a unicycle, Segway, anything like that, uh, definitely recommend checking them out. So let's go on a little trip with this guy. I'm going to work right now. Usually takes about half an hour to get there. So see how fast I get there with this thing. What do you think? It's really awesome. Yeah? yeah. You don't think I'm gonna kill myself on this thing? I might, but yeah. it's a great core cool workout. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. Take, Take care. care. One more thing I forgot to talk about is how big this tire is. So look at this hill here. Boom. So I don't know if you felt that, but that was like a little like pothole thing. Didn't really feel it at all. That's because the tire is like three inches wide and had these like all season treads on them, which makes um, like hits and everything like that way nicer to go over. So definitely something I like about this new wheel. Okay, so this is one of the first big hills on my way to the office. Let's see how the InMotion uh, V10F keeps up. Okay, let's see what this hill does. A couple potholes there. That was pretty good though. Didn't really slow down at all. Maybe like, went down to like 25 kilometers. We really can't complain. The V8 would go down to, the V8 would go down to like, I don't know, a crawl, like 10 kilometers an hour maybe. So it's still up the hill, but this guy goes a lot faster. Okay, so here at the office now. Final thoughts on the InMotion V10F. It is a beast. Uh, definitely a great option to upgrade if you're looking to uh, upgrade from the V8. Uh, if you're just looking to get one of these wheels to begin with, I think I heard someone on a forum talking about 80% uh, of people upgrade from the V8 within a year, either to this or something similar. It feels very similar to the V8, so it feels very intuitive how to ride it once you get your hands on one of these. And it's just a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, personally, for me, I only go 10 kilometers um, to work and then back, so about 20 kilometers a day. So I think the V10 would be the right one for me, not the F. Uh, the V10 having the lower battery, so less distance, but both are fantastic options. Before that, let me know if you guys have ever tried one of these things before. Again, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about these wheels. Huge amount of fun riding these things. It's like my new favorite thing to do, as you can probably tell from the videos. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So let me know what you're riding right now and let's talk about it.